Hi, hello, and welcome to The Word. The central theme of the Bible and Christianity is that man has sinned after he was created, perfect, and therefore needed a savior. But the Godhead had already made a plan to send Jesus as a savior and Messiah. Because man is carnal, he needs forgiveness. Eternal life is promised to all mankind through Jesus, until you read the Quran, which says that this is not true. Sounds interesting? Let's get started. We have walked through the origins of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam in chapter 58. Our focus on Islam unearthed some differences with scripture that we just could not accept. While respecting the beliefs of Muslims, we stated why we could not reconcile these things. But there are two important aspects that I need to bring to your attention. Whether there is only one Quran, as they claim, and the story of Mary and Jesus. I think some things will amaze you, but before we go any further, let us pray. Dear God, worthy is your name. You are high and lifted up. You look upon man with pity. We are so frail and finite. We are in need of a savior. We ask you to forgive us our sins and grant us your favor. Speak to our hearts as we explore truth, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In a short recap, we found out that after the death of Muhammad, Islam separated into two denominations, Sunni and Shia, sometimes called Shiite. The separation was based on the caliphate being selected by a vote or based on direct lineage of Muhammad. The caliphate being both political and spiritual spread Islam across Saudi Arabia and into the Catholic territory, creating crusades. One point to note is that when Islam took over the Silk Road, that trade between Europe and the East was cut off, forcing Europeans to find other areas of trade to satisfy their consumer needs. This is when the West was explored and the New World was discovered. Not that there was no one living there, but that it was now discovered for Europe. Soon after the slave trade boomed because Europe needed more sugar and cotton. That being said, let me get to the crux of the matter. It is suggested that Islam is the last and only religion because God has preserved it and there is no other. There is only one Quran and it is the voice of God. No letter has been changed and the Quran is written in heaven. These are some serious claims. Now, once you can't deny that, then whatever the Quran says, even when it contradicts the Bible, it must be accepted. This poses huge problems for Christianity. So we had to dig a little deeper. In all its teachings, the one on Mary and Jesus is most disturbing. So today we will focus on the story of Jesus and the authenticity of the Quran. I have already shown you that the Quran uses we and our and us just like the Bible. So one needs to explain this. Mary was to be married to Joseph and was pregnant and Joseph wanted to put her away. But the angel told him, don't do it, because she was pregnant of the Holy Ghost. He, being a Jew, waited for the Messiah also, so he understood. She was six months after the mother of John the Baptist. He was born in a manger, and Herod wanted to kill him, and killed all the children under two. They fled to Egypt until the angel told them when to go back. And the Bible continues to say that the child grew up in stature and wisdom and was in favor with God and man. Now let us read what the Quran says about Mary and Jesus. Chapter 19. Mary, Miriam. Verse 1. In the name of Allah, the all-beneficent, the all-merciful. This is an account of your Lord's mercy on his servant, Zechariah. Or a mention a reminder or a recollection. When he called out to his Lord with a secret cry, he said, My Lord, indeed my bones have become feeble and my head has turned white with age. 
Yet never have I, my Lord, been disappointed in supplicating you. Indeed, I fear my kinsmen, after me, and my wife is barren. So grant me from yourself an heir, who may inherit from me and inherit from the house of Jacob, and make him, my Lord, pleasing to you. O Zechariah, indeed we give you the good news of a son whose name is John. Never before have we made anyone his namesake. See the we coming out here? He said, My Lord, how shall I have a son when my wife is barren and I am already advanced in age? He said, So shall it be. Your Lord has said, It is simple for me. Certainly I created you before when you were nothing. He said, My Lord, appoint a sign for me. He said, your sign is that you will not speak to the people for three complete nights. 11. So he emerged before his people from the temple and signaled to them that they should glorify Allah morning and evening. O oh John, we said, hold on with power to the book. And we gave him judgment while still a child and a compassion and purity from us. He was God-weary and good to his parents and was not self-willed or disobedient. Verse 15. Peace be to him the day he was born and the day he dies and the day he is raised alive. And mention in the book Mary when she withdrew from her family to an easterly place. Thus did she seclude herself from them whereupon we sent to her our spirit. And he became incarnate for her as a well-proportioned human. She said, I seek the protection of the all-beneficent from you, should he be God-weary. He said, I am only a messenger of your Lord, that I may give you a pure son. She said, How shall I have a child, seeing that no human being has ever touched me, nor have I been unchaste? Verse 21, he said, So shall it be, your Lord says, it is simple for me, and so that we may make him a sign for mankind, and a mercy from us, and it is a matter already decided. Thus she conceived him, then withdraw with him to a distant place. The birth pangs brought her to the trunk of a date palm. She said, I wish I had died before this and become a forgotten thing beyond recall. Thereupon he called her from below her, saying, Do not grieve, your Lord has made a spring to flow at your feet that is the angel Gabriel or the baby Jesus whom she was carrying in her belly. Shake the trunk of the palm tree. Freshly picked dates will drop upon you. Eat, drink, and be comforted. Then if you see any human say, indeed, I have vowed a fast to the all-beneficent, so I will not speak to any human today. Then carrying him, she brought him to her people. They said, Oh Mary, you have certainly come up with an odd thing. O oh sister of Aaron's lineage, your father was not an evil man, nor was your mother unchaste. Thereat she pointed to him. They said, How can we speak to one who is yet a baby in the cradle? He said, That is Jesus. Indeed, I am a servant of Allah. He has given me the book and made me a prophet. He has made me blessed wherever I may be, and he has enjoined me to maintain the prayer and to pay the zakat as long as I live, and to be good to my mother, and he has not made me self-willed and wretched. Peace is to me the day I was born, and the day I die, and the day I am raised alive. That is Jesus, son of Mary, a word of the real concerning whom they are in doubt. It is not for Allah to take a son, immaculate is he. When he decides on a matter, he just says to it be, and it is. Indeed, Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him. This is a straight path. But the factions differed among themselves. So woe to the faithless at the scene of a tremendous day. Now, now, now. Can a right-thinking person accept something like that to be from God? This is a clear mix-up from the Bible and men who seem to have had an agenda. It does not make sense. The story of John is mixed with the biblical account, but twisted. 
Now Mary is pregnant and withdraws from everybody, then comes back to them with a baby. The baby, or Gabriel, spoke from within her, under her, in her belly. And when she returns to her people, the baby in a cradle begins to speak. Come on. Look at verse 17. Thus did she seclude herself from them, whereupon we sent to her our spirit. And he became incarnate for her as a well-proportioned human. As it turns out, many Muslims are born into the faith and just have to accept it without even living a spiritual life. It's part of the law of the land, Sharia law, and has to be obeyed. But there are Muslims who are questioning the whole faith and research is being done on the origins and history of Islam. Boy, there is so much history that would amaze you. As usual, because of the time frame, we want to pack in as much as we can for your understanding. The Bible as we know it was either written by a prophet directly from God, by Moses directly from God, or the Synoptic Gospels, which are eyewitnesses of the life of Jesus, except Mark and Luke, writing from the eyewitnesses of Matthew and John. So these were written in the lifetime of the writers. But what was to my amazement was that there were many Qurans, and the first one would have been written hundreds of years after and hundreds of miles away. No authenticity, no truth. What about this? The Bible writers call their names in the Bible, call the names of the places like Jerusalem. Everywhere Jesus went is written in the account. Do you know that Muhammad's name is mentioned nowhere in the Quran? Nor is the place called Mecca? That's cause for concern. Hope to have these concerns answered. I have found a very good site with a Muslim Christian and a doctor who spend a lot of time in that area. I will let them do most of the talking. I will put the links below so you can do further study and view in totality. Take a listen. Well, hello everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and I'd like to welcome you to another series that will focus on the Quran. This one is going to deal with the so-called Qira'at and Ahruf controversy, which is probably something that everybody is now becoming more and more familiar with for various reasons. But uh, I'll leave that until a later time during this series that we will discuss this. When I say we, I mean myself. And who else is more qualified to talk about these topics other than our dear brother, Dr. Jay Smith. Jay, thank you so much as always for agreeing to be with us, for taking time to do uh, these uh, amazing series. And uh, uh, it's been timely, uh, to say the least. So uh, what is it, Jay, that we are going to deal with in this particular series? Well, Alfari, this is something that has really come and blown up all over the world in the last two and a half months. We're now in, uh, in 2020. Back in 2016, uh, we introduced this uh, to a place called Speaker's Corner. Many people know about Speaker's Corner. It's unique in the world. Uh, it's the only place on earth where you can say anything you want. It's considered to be the, uh, the bastion of freedom of speech, and it's been around for uh, about 160 years. We would go down there. Hatun Tosh. Hatun Tosh is the one who we really need to give credit to. She was the one that actually found out about these get out by accident. She was in a North African city and she has teaching there and she went into a bookstore mm -hmm. to find some Arabic Qurans to bring back to her students and so she went in there innocently and said, uh, could I please buy so, uh, some uh, good Arabic Qurans, and the response was, well, which one do you want? She says, what do you mean, which one do I want? She says, well, there, there's many different kinds of Qurans. Now, from a Muslim background that she had grown up in Turkey, she'd never heard this before. That's right. And it floored her. I mean, you'd never heard this growing oh, up, absolutely. have you? Absolutely. So, well, there's one Qur'an, and that's all Always been one Qur'an. That's right. And so she was curious. She says, what are you talking about? Well, she says, well, the most popular one here is called the Warsh Qur'an. She says, Warsh Qur'an? I thought of the Qur'an as one. And then 
there's the other one called the Huskron, and they, they had the Kaloon, and they had these others. Well, she said, well, give me them all. And so she brought them back to London and introduced them to me. And I remember kind of smiling because I had heard about this when I would do in my seminary with uh, Dr. Wood, Dudley Woodbury had talked about these different Gera'at or Ahruf. But back then, I didn't think that they were in existence anymore. I had thought that they had been thrown into the Nile River. I thought that they had been done with. I thought mm. this was taken care of back in 1924. Just like Uthman thought he took care of the other things also. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. He thought by burning all these right. other Gera'at, uh, these other other dialects that that would take care of it. And I think this is something we're going to be unpacking. So that was a surprise to her back, I think it was 2013, 2014, I can't remember the year. But it was there from that point that she started collecting these. And I remember having a, we had a, a discussion about this there in London and I said, you know, Hatun, why are you doing this? I didn't really think that this was that important. And for me, thinking in 2013, 2014, when Hatun started bringing these back to London, I said, you're just talking about pronunciation. You're just talking about dialectical differences. You're talking about really nothing more than orality. But that's not really the real battle, Hatun. The real battle is with the continental skeletal text itself. And she says, no, 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 Jay. You don't understand. You're thinking as an academic. You're thinking as an American. I come from this world. I am a Muslim. I have grown up a Muslim. And in my household and in every one of my years growing up, I've always heard one narrative. There is one Quran. There's only one Quran. And you know what's so interesting is that even if I were to take these Qurans and go, let's say, to my, my home back in Saudi uh, and say these are different Qurans, they'll laugh at me and say they're all the same Quran. Exactly. That will be the response. And what she has grown up hearing and what I have always been told, but I didn't really think it through, is there is not one word changed, there is not one letter changed. Correct. The same letters in the Quran that we have today, here it is right here, this is the Quran we have today, is exactly the same as that which was revealed to Muhammad between 610 and 632. Exactly the same letters, the same words. In some cases, they would say even the same dots and the same vowels as that which was finally canonized and written down in its final form at the time of 652, the time of Uthman, exactly the same that exists in heaven. That's what she's been told. Now, is that what you were told when Absolutely. you were a Muslim? Absolutely. It's the exact same Quran. That's why the Bible has always been under attack because Muslims will always make the claims that, hey, you guys have different Bibles, but we have only one Quran. You can't make this claim. We can. I've heard that for 38 years. I've always heard that. This is the only book that can be traced back to its origin. You can't make that claim. This is the only book that has never changed. You can't make that claim. This is the only book that is eternal. You can't make that claim. This is the only book that has retained its eternality has not been touched by human hands, you can't make that claim. And I've, I've said, yes, of course, I would never make that claim about the Bible. We don't need to make that claim about the Bible. We have never for a very good reason because we know it was written by men. We even know the names of the men that wrote each book. We put their names at the head of each book. Inspired by God, absolutely. But inspired by God, yeah. but not written by God, verbatim. And they're making an even bigger claim, and we're going to get into this later on. I don't want to really right. steal the uh, thunder for right now. But can you understand what Hutton was saying to me back in 2014? She was saying, Jay, wake up, wake up, wake up. Let me, believe me, this will destroy every Muslim's faith. Because every Muslim has, all, every Muslim, and she's talking about 99.9% .9 of Muslims. That is the Muslims who are here in the traditional world, the Muslims that are in where she came from, in Turkey, the Muslims that are on the street, the Muslims that are in their homes, who have always been drilled this in their head, that there is only one Quran, that God preserves that Quran, that God does not allow any human interference, that God guards it. And therefore, the Quran that we have in our hand today is the same as the Quran that is in heaven, the same that was given to Muhammad, the same that was written by Uthman. Therefore, to, under, to even suggest that there's another Quran or a second Quran or a different Quran destroys everything that she grew up with. And she says, Jay, that's the impact. We've got to collect these Qur'an. So she did so. She started collecting them. Now she didn't go to these countries herself. She had friends who were in the certain country, like to say Morocco, or they were there in Jordan, or they were there in uh, Yemen. Those are the three major countries. And she says, when you go there, go to the bookshop and ask them, I need this one. I need Kalun. I need Nafi. I need Ibn, Kalun, uh, Ibn Kathir. And she knew all the names because they're right there on Wikipedia. 
You can go up on Wikipedia. Go, and I encourage any of you who exactly. are listening to this, you Muslims, go to Wikipedia and look at the 30 names, the 30 different canonical uh, get'ats, the 30 different yep. get'at Qur'ans. And folks, these are seven that I just bought about two weeks ago. I got these online. You can buy these online. These are seven different Qira'at Qur'ans. That's what we're going to get into. We're going to go look at not just these seven. These are seven of the 30. Four of them are from the seven, and three of them are from the other what, 21 that we're going to talk about. Right. Or in this case, we're not going to get into that because we're going to talk about the seven, then the 10, then the the 30. But these ones you can buy. I got these from Illinois. These are here in the United States. And I would encourage any of you who want to get into this field, buy them up now because they're going to stop this once they realize how public we're going to make this, that the every one of these Qurans that you see here is different. Not one of these is the same. And this has nothing to do with translations. This has nothing to do with English or French or Portuguese or any other language, these are all in Arabic, which is your language. Yeah, and, and I want to just uh, explain to because people ask me sometimes, are you saying these are two different Qur'ans, different meaning, like when you open them, you're not going to find exactly the same thing? Um, I know where you're coming from when you say different. Uh, please explain what do we mean okay. by different. So when you look at the Arabic, not now this is Arabic and English. This is the Quran that we use today. This is the Quran that everybody uses well. Now according to Yasser Qadi, at least 90% of the Muslim world uses this one. And this is one that we have to use, and it's called the Hafs Quran. We'll get into that later on, what we mean by Hafs. This right here, look and see what it says. It Iwash. says wash right there. Right. Wash. Min Nafi. That's okay. right. There, it's from this family of Nafi. Now, this one here and this one are two of the most popular Qurans in the world today. This one is used in North Africa. This one is used all around the rest of the world, and this is the one we have to use. But just looking at the Arabic texts in these two, there are 5,000 differences between this book and this book. Yet I've always heard from every Muslim in every corner, in every debate, in every discussion, that the Quran is exactly the same. And There's not exactly one letter, what not one word say. different. That's exactly what I want you to say. When we say different, we're talking from a Muslim standpoint, folks. Muslims will tell you it's one Quran that has no changes whatsoever, yet there you go, you've heard it. 5,000 changes just between these two. We're going to unpack that a little bit more in another episode. We're going to look at see some of the changes. We can't, don't have the time to go through all 5,000. And we're not the ones who are doing the work. You and I haven't done the work here. This has been done by a group who, they're in Australia, working under Bernie Power, Dr. Bernie Power, and his whole team of Arabists. They are all Arab speakers. They are all Arab teachers. They are all grammaticists. They have looked at these five, and they have broken them down into categories. And we're going to look at some of those categories, just to show you that with this, these are not incidental changes. These right. change not only wholesale words, but also the meanings, and in some cases, the practices, and also some cases, the beliefs. Well, hello everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and I'd like to welcome you back to another uh, episode of this series on the Piraat and uh, the controversies surrounding that. Today's episode going to ask a unique question. Were there even more than 30? And of course, with me here in the studio is Dr. J. Smith. Dr. J., thank you so much, as always, for being here. And this is the question, were there more than 30? Well, that, I mean, that's are, the question I yeah. would have never suggested, and I would never have even surmised well, two and a half months ago. Uh, we didn't know about this. I, this. Much of this material has come to light because of Dr. Shadi Hekmuk Nasser. Now, from what Shadi Nasser is telling us, is, is there is a reason why those 30 had to be picked. And the reason why is that 200-year period from the 8th, 9th, and 10th century, there is a litany of Qur'ans. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? Well, let's go back and let's go to the slide again. Uh, let's put the slide back up there. And there you can see the Kirat Conundrum. There you can see Muhammad died in, nine, in 632. Uthman uh, introduced his Qureshi Qur'an in 652. And of course, uh, w reminding ourselves of the 10 readings, there are the 10 readings there. The three uh, red ones at the bottom, which come later, the seven early ones at the top, those are the green ones. Uh, those were chosen by Ibn Mujahid, and the ones at the bottom were chosen by Al Jazari. And then uh, we have the followed by the 20 narrators. Uh, there are the 20 narrators, uh, those are the tw purple ones, and I've circled the two most important Warsh and Hafs in black. Now, the question is were there more? Yes. Right. There were.
Even if you don't understand all the historical details, what you must take away is that while the Muslims that you have met ignorantly claim that the Quran is the voice of God dictated to Muhammad and there is only one Quran never tampered with, all translations are just translations. They have no idea that there are over 30 different Qurans, not translations, but Qurans that claim to be the voice of God and they differ greatly. Well, without having to read or listen to this wealth of evidence, the very text of the Quran is disjointed, confusing, and yes, it sounds made up. These people had knowledge of Christianity for hundreds of years, but for whatever reason tried to have their own religion, forced it on others, and now claim that it is untouchable. Well, who is in the background of all of this? I don't have to tell you. His biggest deception is religion. Give them a semblance of God, even pretend to be God, and they will never detect it. He told Eve you will be like God. He wants worship and he will do anything to get it. We must keep truth alive. If you have a Muslim friend, send this to them. I am sure they are ignorant of this. Because a certain ethnic group is born into Muslim, it becomes their way of life, family ties and history. To break away is almost to lose their pedigree. But we must help save the lost. The word of God still stands at the pinnacle of this world. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. But he has died to save the lost. We cannot save ourselves. There is no other who can save us. This we must understand by faith that the God who became man incarnate did so to save us, not to be a prophet only. He was a prophet, savior, high priest in heaven, and then he's coming as a king of kings. It makes sense to take him as your savior. No amount of Islamic explanation can free its believers from the conundrum. God loves you if you are a Muslim watching this. God calls upon you if you are a Christian watching this. Go and tell before it is too late. Let us pray. Kind Father, how thankful we are that you have guided us, not only us but many others. We thank you for the beautiful story of Jesus, of humility and love for humanity. Even if the devil tries to turn it into a circus story, we still believe in its powerful effect. Bless us as we purpose to teach the world what is written in your word. And may you help us to have the victory, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. And do have a wonderful day or night as you rest in the wise, objective, resourceful, and definitive word of God. Amen.